H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus. One-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. List of files that were available in training 1. So, if you are able to see this, here it is showing you all the properties of this file, program 2. So, it is saying that program 2 is a file that is available in training 1 directory, the path which I had given in my command and it has been created today at this time and the permissions that I have on it is read write permissions and also it is showing you like who is the owner and who is the super group and all those details as well. So the same thing you had you can see it here as well. So the type of information that I had copied into my HDFS is a file which is named as program2 and the size of my file is 0.7 KB and the replication factor is 1 and still now this replication factor is a configurable thing which I can give right so I had given replication factor as 1 somewhere and that's the reason it is showing as 1 if at all I declare it as 2 or 3 definitely it will show you as replication factor as 2 or 3 and guys by the way can anyone tell me like where I will declare this replication factor there is one particular site in our Adobe file system which will have this replication factor, right? Can anyone give a guess on it? Uh, core? No. No, Akshay, it's not core. It's not MapRed. Yes, it is HDFS, right? So the replication and data management, everything is related to our HDFS, right? So definitely these configurations will be available in our HDFS site.xml. So if you go through your HDFS site.xml that was available in your conf directory, you will be able to see our replication factor which is declared as 1 over there, right? Okay. And the next one is block size. So it is telling as my block size, my default block size is 64 MB. So I had, I haven't declared my block size anywhere and so that's the reason it is taking the default size as 64 MB. So that's what guys some of the properties of a particular file once it got created into our HDFS. So let's go to the next command which is copy files from HDFS to local file system. So if you observe this is just a reverse command of copy from local right. So this command will have as copy to local. So it will copy all the files or any particular files that is available in our HDFS to local file system. So the command used for this is Hadoop FS copy to local my HDFS path and then my local path. So let's try running this command. Mm, I think test is already available over there. So let me give a new one. Test one. Okay. So I'm trying to copy this. So I have program 2 created in my training 1 directory. So I am trying, trying to copy this program 2 file to my local file system to test 1. right? So let's see whether it has been created. So if you see here, I have copied this. 
and I have test one as this is the first program in Hadoop. This is copy from local to HDFS. So this is how you copy the files. The same command can also be done again with get command. So it's like a reverse command of put command. So the format you are going to use is Hadoop FS get your Hadoop file system path and then your local file system path. So if you observe this, we have two major commands, right? Copy from local which is also a put command and the next one is so it's up to us if at all I want to use copy from local or put and copy to local or get I have a question. Let me see. Yes, Neha. Yeah, I do understand that it's like a, a bit confusing factor for you, but still I suggest you to hold on for one more class so that you will be able to understand. Maybe you can check with the organizer. He will share you all the links for the PPTs and all those things. You can go from them. I mean, I just wanted to convey you like we haven't did any rocket science till now. So it's all about the basics we which we understand. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I got your points, Neha. Yeah. But still don't worry. I mean, uh, as you are already aware of basic Java and all those things uh, I think it shouldn't give any problem for you I mean a basic core knowledge about Java will help you a lot in understanding the things much more easier and faster way so only thing that you have to concentrate is a bit uh, command on Linux mm, okay okay so that should help you don't worry or don't get uh, but I suggest you to just go through this class and try to understand or try to dig whatever things you will able to understand and just keep it aside and once you st before you start doing all these things just go through the PPTs and recordings all the recordings I'm going to share it today so probably you can go through them so that you will be much more in a better shape okay so guys let's see the next command which we have which is deleting a file or directory from HDFS so I had created a, a directory in my HDFS and I want to delete it at particular moment I don't need it and it's using so much of space okay at that moment I will feel like deleting that particular directory so for that the command used is Hadoop FS RMR user Hadoop inst so this is the path whatever that I want to delete it so let's see whether we have this at all first of all mm -hmm. so or else okay I have program 2 in my training directory let's delete this file okay And one more thing guys, here the control C and control V will not work. Every time you have to copy it and you have to right click it to paste that. So control C and V is not going to work here. Training program 2. So I'm trying to delete program 2 file from my training directory. So it is saying as deleted HDFS and then my path. So let's see whether it is available or not right now. So I have the training directory but still the directory is empty. Right. So 
this file have been deleted from my training directory. So the same way I can delete directories as well. So if at all I give Hadoop FS RMR user Hadoop inst Hadoop 1.0.3 and then I end up with training, the whole directory will get deleted. So be careful before you delete any of your files. Just directly, don't directly give the di directory names. It will cause you some problems sometimes. And the next one is safe mode. So sometimes if you log in, you will see, uh, if you log in and once you open your web interface, you will see like safe mode is on and it is going to be restored maybe in 10 seconds or 5 seconds or 20 seconds or maybe sometimes you have to uh, leave your safe mode manually as well. So that will happen sometimes whether you are, if your data node is not able to talk with your name node properly or maybe you shut down your virtual machine or you are out of your Hadoop uh, file system wrongly, directly bluntly if you close it uh, without closing all your processes and all those things, sometimes it will go to safe mode. Means uh, it's like you will not be able to create any file or delete any file from your HDFS. Uh, probably you will be able to browse your file system but still you will not be able to create or do any operations on your HDFS. So at that moment you have to give the command Hadoop FS safe mode leave. So this will make your HDFS come out of safe mode. Uh, guys don't get panic that if you are not able to execute this command. Maybe sometimes it will say you like permission denied and you will not be able to do that. At that moment just give the command Hadoop FS admin safe mode leave. So if you give the command admin it will give you the admin uh, permissions to execute this command. So that should help you. Any of this command should help you to come out of safe mode and probably most of the times you will come to face this problem. So I'm not going to run this command right now because my Hadoop cluster is fine and it is up and running properly now. So this command will not work for me right now. So and the next one is Hadoop FSCK user Hadoop inst and then the files. So these three commands we have already tested right. So FSCK is like which will give you all the list of files that were available in that particular directory. So if I give this FSCK user Hadoop inst Hadoop 1.0.3 files, it will show you all the files that were available in Hadoop 1.0.3 directory. So it will be very huge and it's going to be take some time as well if I run this command as well. And the next one is report and refresh nodes. So I'm not going to discuss about these things because we already discussed on report and refresh nodes. So whenever a new data node have been added, if you give this command refresh nodes, it will get reflected on your web interface as well as on the terminal. So this, these are few commands that can be executed through our terminal. So this is one way, right? This is command line interface. And the next one is through our Java API. So I can execute or I can do the same operations by writing a Java program as well. So it's up to me to decide whether I want to write a new Java program or I want to do it through the terminal itself. So but if you ask me or if you ask me to say something or suggest me something, I would tell you like just follow the commands because that's the most easiest way. People will look for the most easiest way to finish their tasks, right? So if at all if it's just a requirement of copying a files from our local file system to then Hadoop file system, then use the commands instead of Java programs. But if you want to do some analysis or if you want to generate some reports, then go for Java programs. That's the best way and that's the only way do the analysis. So before you write your Java programs there should be some editor for that right. So the editor which we are going to use right now is Eclipse. So guys you can directly google it and uh, and type it as 
Eclipse standard Kepler for a 64 bit machine if it's if at all your machine is a 64 machine or download Eclipse standard Kepler for a 32 bit machine there you will get some tar.gz files so download the tar.gz file and unzip it and install Eclipse so we have already Eclipse installed on our system and just I'm trying to open that So I have written three programs here, copy program and then a create program and then a read program. So what this Hadoop, sorry HDFS copy a program will do is it's going to copy a file from my local file system to HDFS. So if I go through command line interface it is just copy from local but if I go through a Java program it is some sort of commands some or some sort of statements that you have to give it here so if at all you want to write any program just go to file and then new and then it's a Java project right So create a Java project maybe h2k1 finish so I had created a new Java project and then I need to have a uh, editor to write my class right so go to new and then class so by default class one I am giving okay so once you created a class by default you are getting a package and then a public class so but still it's up to you if you want to have the setting or not I mean you can create a class with an empty file or maybe by default you can have this package and public class loaded in it okay so once you come to this place copy your program and don't worry guys I will share you all these programs as well so that you can try it at your homes once you install your clusters and there are few libraries that I have to import so if you see the libraries here I have few Java libraries and then few libraries that were particular to Hadoop so all the libraries related to Hadoop will start with import org.apache.hadoop so I have few configuration libraries buffered if FS input stream, data input stream, output stream and few other things as well and guys don't worry about these libraries it's by default you have all these libraries in all your programs so if at all you, uh, you want to know like what is this buffered input stream it just go to Google and click it it will show you like uh, I mean what is the interface from with Java class you are getting this buffered input stream and what this function is going to, I mean what is the functionality of this particular command so if you observe this program the first command I'm having is public class where my program starts and then I had having a main class where I will write my whole program so the first command which here is configuration so this command will create an object called as conf which will import all my configuration properties into this Java program so we had given all the configurations in three sites right core site mapred and hdfs sites right so i have to use all those properties in my java program so in order to use those properties i am giving this command called as configuration con is equal to new of configuration and then there is a step called as uri so what this uri command gives is it will tell you that which local host i am connecting to so if you remember I had given this local host somewhere in our configuration sites right can anyone guess that
right right perfect so it is core site dot xml where i will give my local host address right so this is the same address if you see here also